Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back for another video. Today uh, we're going to mess with the EK some more and uh, see if we can sort this thing out and finally get it over with and out of the garage. <clears throat> so last night we ended up fixing the oil catch can fitting and um, sorting that all out. I installed it back onto the car, cleaned all the oil off, and I took it out for a test drive this morning and holy freaking issues this thing has been having. So to start, the oil leak is not fixed. It sprayed oil all over once again. So that was not the uh, oil fix. Uh, thinking it's the sandwich plate now. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to just delete the sandwich plate altogether and I'm gonna run the oil feed line into the uh, oil pressure switch spot on the back of the block and try it again and see if the oil leak is gone. I'm thinking it's the sandwich plate because there's really no other spot that it can be leaking from at that particular area of the motor. Now, in my um, test drive this morning, I was driving the car and you would hit the throttle and it would buck really hard and, and not have any throttle response or nothing. And come to find out, the TPS was uh, super loose and the bolts came out and they rattled out and uh, the TPS was like not even hooked up. So I have to get some new bolts for the TPS on the back of the throttle body and get this reinstalled, recalibrated and reset and then reset the idle do all that to get this TPS back working. Kind of sucks with these uh, radical setups like this. Uh, they're not really street friendly. You know, when you're driving them and stuff, you find a lot of issues, especially with this thing uh, being literally only on the dyno its whole life. It has not hit the road yet. It has not hit the track, anything like that. So a lot of these issues are going to be more present, I say on the street versus on the dyno, because when you're on the dyno, um, you know, a lot of these issues, it's more of a controlled environment and you're not going to see a lot of the issues that you would going down the road, you know, hitting bumps and, you know, driving the car. So I'm going to get this thing jacked back up in the air, fix this freaking oil leak, hopefully once and for all, get that sorted out, get the TPS back on and uh, I'll catch up with you guys when I'm done fixing the oil leak and um, I'll pick up when we put the TPS back on. Okay, so anyways, I got this thing all cleaned off. I deleted the sandwich plate and I read, ran the feed line right into the oil pressure switch slot. And I got the TPS all bolted back down and calibrated with the S300 here. Uh, just set the TPS to zero and then wide open it's 100. So that's all good. And now, just idling it in the garage. Can't see a damn thing leaking. So, like I said, it doesn't leak unless you go hit boost with it. And uh, we'll go do that here in a little while and uh, see if this thing's freaking still leaking or not. <laughs> Did you tip over, Michael? The bench? God. Yeah. I'm not going to leave the seat, I'm going to get seated. Look at that. How you doing? There you go. That was way harder than it should have been. <laughs> oh. I think I'm going to break this chair in half. There we go. Isn't it already fucked? Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, so we just got back from yet another test drive with this car. And um, it's still leaking. Still pissing oil everywhere. Uh, sandwich plate wasn't the issue. Uh, catch can fittings are good. Tested those. Nothing's leaking there. Nothing on the back of the block is leaking. So I'm thinking the only possible thing it can be is the head gasket. And it's just the head's lifting under boost and it's, you know, pissing oil out of the back of probably where the VTEC comes through the head or something and it's pissing out of the back of the block right there um, under boost the head is lifting and you know spraying oil so I don't know how far this guy really wants me to go with this thing I've already been messing with this thing a lot longer than I anticipated um, I have like four or five days into it now and um, you know I don't know what kind of budget this guy wants to spend on having me continue to mess with this thing we already fixed quite a bit of stuff on it. We fixed the wiring. Uh, we spent a whole day wiring this thing, cleaning up a bunch of stuff in the wiring. Got the speedo working. 
Uh, I got the car idling because it didn't idle before and it sort of idles now. I think it still has like a throttle body issue where either the throttle body set screw, the air screw or something on the top is seized right now so I can't adjust it and uh, I can only set it with the throttle stop. It doesn't have an idle air control valve and it's got a huge intake manifold so it's kind of tricky to get these things to idle like tamely. So the idle's at like 1500 right now. But that's like this the lowest I can get it to idle without dying. And uh, you know, messed with the tune a bunch. I cleaned up cruising. Before I wouldn't even cruise, it was so lean it was off the gauge cruising. So we tuned that. We got everything else dialed in. He wanted me to dial in his boost by gear, but it's kind of pointless because the car has a 23 pound wastegate spring. It makes like 23 pounds on just the gate spring. So that's way too big of a spring. He's gonna need to get a smaller spring and do some stuff there before we can even mess with that stuff. Um, but uh, I, it sucks because I can't really be even tuning on this thing or messing with it because it's so fucking loud. This thing is loud as shit. Like, my car is like a little pee compared to this thing. This thing, it, it barks. Like, even idling, it's, it's, it's rowdy. And, I mean, I have neighbors literally like, I don't know, 10 feet away from my house. And, I mean, they already probably don't like me because it's so fucking loud. <laughs> I'm messing with cars all the time. And, and having this thing here, I mean, I have, like, a, a couple-hour window where, you know, neighbors aren't home and I can leave and, and get this thing driving and whatever uh, without pissing everybody off. And, and I don't really have the space to work on stuff right now. And that's, that's just, like, a couple reasons why I really need a shop to do this stuff um, and continue doing what I'm doing and have a dyno so we can literally have this thing on the dyno to check for the oil leaks instead of having to go drive the car around and you know whatnot to actually diagnose stuff it just it takes more time to do it that way it's not efficient and yeah so whatever this thing is probably good enough for now um he might be able to race it as is but like i said it's kind of it's leaking oil so um probably gonna have to get that addressed and like i said i don't know where it's coming from this this is kind of stumping me, and um, like I said, I think it's coming from the head gasket. I really don't know where else it could be coming from, especially because it's only in boost when it leaks. So, I don't know. We did fix a bunch of other stuff too, like a bunch of loose fuel fittings, and the top hat on the on the uh, fuel pumps there, some of the wiring at the fuel pump. Yeah. Throttle position sensor. Throttle position sensor came off loose, all screws backed out. Put that in there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to give up on this thing, but I'm kind of done with it for now. Um, maybe he can come back at a later date and we can mess with it some more. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for this car, whatever, because just being a headache. All right, guys, so I took a break from the uh, Civic yesterday, this hatch that I'm working on, because it was kind of making me angry and I didn't really get anywhere on it. I uh, fixed the TPS issue and tried to fix this oil leak, but I couldn't fix the oil leak no matter what I did. Um, I'm kind of come to a conclusion now that I think the oil leak is coming from the head gasket, and um, that's really the only other place that I can think of that this thing would be pouring oil out. Uh, like I said, I checked everything else. I literally have checked everything. So um, that's the only other thing it could really be is the head gasket. So unfortunately, this thing's probably going to need... A new head gasket or uh, he said he's gonna try to retorque the head studs when he gets the car back uh, but it is good for the time being I suppose uh, just to drive it and idle it um, I'm actually going a little bit farther for him to kind of make up for you know this all this lost time trying to fix this oil leak that hasn't gone anywhere so what I'm actually doing is I'm gonna try to set up his boost by gear and I kind of wanted to show you guys uh, what I'm doing now this car, uh, the way it was set up with the boost by gear completely off on the Honda and the boost control solenoid completely turned off, it should run on just the wastegate pressure alone. And when I turn the wastegate pressure, or just on wastegate, this car makes like 20 pounds, 22 pounds. So I pulled the wastegate completely off here and I got it in my bench vise and it had both of these springs installed into the gate. Um, it had two springs which um, you know might be you know making this thing run higher boost so I'm going to be removing one of the springs I'm gonna remove the heavier spring of the two and I'm going to reinstall with just the, the lightest spring possible and hopefully this thing's more manageable and 
I'm assuming it's probably gonna be around 10 pounds of boost now or something like that with the gate off, which is a lot more, um, you know, it's easier to deal with when you're trying to get out of the hole at the racetrack. You don't wanna pound 23 pounds of boost at it in second gear. You want more like 10 or 14, you know, in between there. So I'm gonna get this wastegate back reinstalled onto the car and then I'm going to um, set the idle on this thing one more time because my buddy Kurt actually helped me out trying to get this thing to idle a little bit better because um, you know with a big camshaft and a Honda and a huge intake and throttle body and all that it can be a little bit tricky trying to get these cars to idle and uh, I'm gonna try one of these tricks and see if uh, I can get this thing to idle lower than 1500 rpm because I currently can only get it to idle around 1500 and can't really get it to come come down below that without dying all right guys so we got the wastegate reinstalled back onto the car got the vacuum lines routed for the boost control solenoid and uh this thing's looking good i actually had some idling issues with it like i was telling you guys but i got it all sorted out uh this thing chops like a motherfucker now i'll show you guys what i did let you hear it quick Now what I did to kind of compensate for such the such a large camshaft, no idle air control valve motor, and you know big throttle body, all that kind of stuff, um, it can be a little bit tricky, like I said, to get these things to idle. So what I did is I actually crammed the throttle stop screw and I, I set the idle kind of high, like around two grand, until it was like steady and it wasn't idle surging. And then after I did that, I kind of pulled timing out of the table, like out of the, uh, uh, I pulled timing out of the table and I also pulled fuel out of the table on the tune-up. So this thing is pretty lean at idle, but it actually idles. Um, it's kind of just the way that these camshafts are. They have such a big overlap that it's kind of tricky to get them to actually idle. So it's kind of just a little trick to allow the engine to have a lot of air, but don't give it enough fuel to keep it idling high, if, you, if that makes sense. Um, so like I said, I pulled a bunch of timing and I pulled some fuel out of idle just so I can get it to idle smooth, not die. And, you know, as you can see, you rev it up, it comes right back down to idle, etc. So this thing is freaking awesome now. Um, just going to take it out for a quick test drive and uh, check out the boost now that I changed the wastegate spring. And uh, maybe mess with the boost by gear tables a little bit. And then this thing is going to be on its way out. All right guys, I'm out here driving the car now and uh, everything is running really good now. Uh, we got cruising running super good. This thing's like 1450 cruising around everywhere. And uh, coming into boost, it goes 12 1180, pulls it out. And uh, I did a data log now that we have the, uh, you know, the spring out of the gate. Uh, pulled that one wastegate spring out and uh, Hopefully you guys can see. I'm sorry I don't have anybody else filming with me right now, so it's kind of hard to get all this stuff. But uh, on the log here, we're seeing 11 pounds of boost by 6,000. And 7,500, we're at 13 pounds. And, uh, you know, coming up on eight grand, we're upwards of 14 pounds. So this wastegate's probably a little bit small. It's got a little bit of boost creep going on, but it's okay. Um, I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world. So I'm gonna set up his boost by gear tables quick and uh, see where we get some duty cycle in this thing. So right now we have the duty cycle at 1%. I'm gonna put like 30 in it and see what it does. Um, 
see where the boost is compared to what it was just there and uh, we can go from there so if 30% on the duty cycle here is going to be like 20 pounds or 22 pounds uh, then we can set this up on the boost by gear tables down here so I'm gonna get all this squared away and uh, see where this thing's at all right guys so that car is out of here see you later Jose kind of thing and uh, it's going down to my buddy Kurt in Madison. He has a dyno and he's gonna try to fix that oil leak and you know button up the car the rest of the way. Uh, sucks we couldn't really get the rest of it fixed for him. And like I said, the real reason why I couldn't is because I mean, I can't really drive that car safely on the road. Yeah, you guys know the deal. So um, back in action with me and Michael's cars for the time being until we can get another customer car in here. Um, I'm gonna clean the garage up and uh, we might go mess with Michael's car a little bit now. Okay guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for the video. Uh, kind of wanted to give you a recap of what we all did. Uh, we went through the car and had a bunch of idling issues and some boost, you know, a little bit higher boost than we wanted to see and that oil leak. And then we had the speedo we had to fix. We had a bunch of wiring we fixed on the car, etc. So. That car actually is going down to my buddy Kurt in Madison. He has, um, you know, a little bit better tools to do the diagnosing with the oil leak, considering he has a dyno. Um, uh, he kind of, I've been talking with him a little bit, and he wanted to take on the project from here and uh, fix it safely instead of me messing with it on the street. And, um, all that so Kurt's taking on the rest of the job he's gonna get the head gasket or whatever the oil leak is fixed and he's gonna let me know and keep me posted on that so I'm very uh, curious to what is wrong with it and I'm for surely gonna let you guys know where that oil leak was actually coming from but uh, yeah so that car is out of here unfortunately um, it doesn't happen often but we couldn't you know we couldn't finalize the car and I honestly it's been bugging the shit out of me because normally I don't let cars leave this garage unless they're 100. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm not like that. I, I wanna make sure the car is perfect before the customer takes it back. But customer and Kurt, we're all kind of on the same page here and we're all kind of trying our hardest to get that car ripping. Honestly, that car with how radical it is will have no issues going nine seconds in the quarter mile. That car is no joke. It's fast, it's done right, it's got built transmission, built motor, cams, whole nine yards. So, yeah, super stoked to see the outcome on that thing. Um, he's going to keep in touch with me. Hopefully, we'll see it back here on the channel. And uh, hopefully, I'll meet up with him at the racetrack and help him tune it maybe at the racetrack and stuff like that. So, yeah. Anyways, um, anyways that's going to wrap it up for the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I, I taught you something with maybe how to get your Honda to idle with big camshafts and a radical intake, no idle air control valve kind of thing. Um, I'm not 100% experienced with like extreme high horsepower Hondas. I've had one myself. I had one that made 800 horsepower. It had Skunk 2 Pro 2 cams, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Kurt tuned it for the most part. I'm confident in doing cars up to like 600 horsepower. More than that, and I get a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie. It's kinda something that I'm not, you know, 100% familiar with just because um, I don't personally like running Hondas that big. I don't like running that radical of setups just because I don't have the money to stick into like a big dog box transmission and all that kind of stuff and a lot of times when you run a motor like that you work on it all the time a lot of times they require a lot of maintenance and they're not really street friendly so that's that's why I don't really mess with Hondas in that high of horsepower range um, and I don't have a whole lot of like tuning experience with it so I'm learning as we go here and I'm keeping you guys updated as much as I can and I'm being as honest with I can with you guys I'm not you know out dicking anybody around or nothing so Anyways, uh, we had a bunch of issues with my car, and we did that earlier today, and that's going to be in another video. I don't know when I'm going to post it. Maybe I'll post it right away after this video, or maybe I'll wait a little while. I don't know. Normally, I film a video, and then like that night, I upload it, but I kind of got 
behind and I didn't upload yesterday and you know now we're in this situation but we did wrap some JB tune stuff and we put it on a my civic here so you guys will be seeing an install video for that stuff and uh, some issues we had with my car so anyways hopefully you enjoyed this one hit the like button subscribe and uh, we'll see you tomorrow in an hour, four hours, eight hours, ten hours. I don't know. Hit the bell. You'll find out. Have a good one, guys.